You're listening to the Sweet Life Entrepreneur Podcast. Simplified strategies to grow your service business and launch a life you love faster. With business mentor and entrepreneur activator, April Beach. All right, you guys, we are back again for another week with my very good longtime friend, Elizabeth McFadden, and she is here for a series talking about the importance of branding and how we can bring really big business branding to your um, smaller lifestyle business and why it's so important. So if you missed last week, make sure you tune in um, because it's the fundamentals. It sets everything up for what we're talking about this week um, and the following week, actually. So Liz, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. I love that you're here again and appreciate your time. Um, yes, some, thank you for somebody, having me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. If somebody missed last week, can you just give like a really quick brief intro as to who you are and what you do? Yes. So I am one of the founding partners and the managing director of Novella Brand House. And we're a marketing, advertising, branding and design firm here in Kansas City. And we serve small to mid-sized businesses. And what I just told you right there is pretty much our brand statement. See, brand strategy in action. That's right. (laughs) You just have to have Um, that down to be on a podcast. You have to have (laughs) Right, right. Or anything. Um, And then just a little bit about kind of what we talked about. Um, I truly am um, in the, in the shoes of where your audience, a lot of your audience members have been and are because I started my first company 13 years ago. It was one of the first virtual ad agencies in the country. And I had a three-year-old and literally a newborn baby. Um, And now I have three kids (laughs) and they're 16, 13 and 10. And, um, skipping all the way forward to now, I, um, run a company of, of nine people uh, along with my partner, Claire McLaren, who has four boys, by the way. So, um, but we've scaled this business kind of as our kids have grown. So it, I mean, yeah, this is what, this is what it is, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. Awesome. Okay. So last week, again, we talked about, um, what is branding? What's the fundamentals of branding, the components of branding, who needs branding? Seriously, go back and listen to it if you missed it, <laughs> because it is, um, it's very important in order to apply everything that we're going to talk about in today's episode. I don't know that you can apply it as fully if you missed last week. So in today's episode, Liz, you're going to take us through the process of self branding, like the steps to brand yourself, because, you know, our listeners aren't aren't launching, you know, huge software companies or, um, you know, a company that's on the scale of Nike or that's that's not who our listeners are. But the importance of branding is absolutely essential for them to be successful in their space and what they want to do. So uh, take us through this process of self branding and and how one would go about this. And if you guys haven't yet, make sure that you grab the template for the branding template that goes along with this episode in the show notes of this, because you're going to be able to take what you're listening to today from Liz and use it to implement in your brand strategy template that we've given you totally free with this episode. Um, so go ahead, Liz, and uh, let's chat Let's chat about this and guide us okay. through this process. Okay, so I'll first take you through almost the different components of a brand strategy and then talk about how you actually start this, you know, your self-branding process and, and really why that's important, maybe even before you, you work with somebody. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. But so the first part or the first thing to brand strategy is, is competitive analysis, right? You have to know your competitive landscape. And that's direct competitors and indirect competitors. Even if you feel like, oh, right now I'm the first, maybe, maybe you are first of this category, right? Maybe you are, we have a client here, they're for their four lease luxury villas. Typically you can only buy a villa, but this is a whole community of luxury four lease villas. So we had to introduce this whole idea to, to people. So there really wasn't there. They didn't have any direct competitors. But they did have indirect competitors. Obviously, there's other places their their potential tenants could live, like townhouses or things like that. Um, so that's the first thing: is competitive analysis and knowing the competitive landscape that your company lives in. The second piece 
is target audience, all about target audience. You have to define who that audience is. We hear a lot when we ask people or cl- you know, clients or new companies, you know, we'll say, okay, who's your, who's your ideal client, your ICA, who's your target audience? And they're like, oh, it could be anybody from eight to 80. No, <laughs> it's not eight to 80, <laughs> I can assure you that. Um, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe anybody between eight and 80 would buy your product, okay? But that's not what we're asking. What we're asking is, who is your ideal, your I see, your ideal customer avatar, your, you know, your your core target audience. You know, again, that who are the who's the the twenty percent that's driving eighty percent of your business, right? Typically, what we do is we'll define a primary audience and a secondary audience, and we'll and you'll want to get kind of granular. You'll want to say, okay, you know. Um, she's a suburban woman. She's between the ages of 30 and 40. You know, she works full time, da, 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 da. Um, so you want to identify your audience because you need to know who you're talking to. You need to know what resonates to them, especially when you're creating your messaging. That's really important. You need to know kind of the language that they use, you know, that they're using about you, not maybe the industry talk that you use because they're not going to understand that. Um, it has to be in their language. So super important to know who you're talking to. And then to understand at this point, you've looked at the competitors. Now you need to understand what is your audience looking for that you can fulfill that's not being met out there right now. So that's the second piece. Third piece is the value proposition. And that's kind of one of those like really fancy big words you like to throw around. <laughs> but essentially what it is, it's what is your offer what makes you different? What problem do you uniquely solve? And uniquely, that's like the keyword in that whole thing. Not just what you do, not just what you solve, because honestly, the competitor down the street could be doing the same thing for cheaper, better, whatever, more, with more style, whatever. Mm. How do you solve that problem for your audience that, and, how, and nobody, like, in a way that nobody else is doing it? Um, so that's really your value proposition. The fourth thing is brand statement, elevator speech. So in my little introduction earlier, it's when I said, oh, you know, Novella Brand House, we're a marketing, branding, advertising, and design firm. That is part of our brand. That's our brand statement. So you need one statement that clearly says what your company does. Sometimes we hear clients say, oh, but I want that to be like, you know, they want it to feel more fun and creative. And, you know, there's time and a place to get creative in your strategy on kind of on down. But in this statement, it needs to be, you know, don't, um, you know, don't try to get too clever with it. Just be very clear and concise because the whole idea is this is really like your opening statement. So you want your potential customers to, or anybody for that matter, that you're telling this to, to from that one sentence, get it and understand it. And I'll use myself as an example again. Typically when I say my, our brand statement, people will either, you know, if they're not interested at all in this, like, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds great. They understand what we do. They don't need us, whatever, they walk away. But otherwise people will say, oh, okay, you work um, with small to medium, medium-sized businesses. Tell me more about that, okay? They might say, oh, you do branding. What kind of branding do you do? But that almost gives them the chance to dive in more to what your company does. But you've set up exactly what you do, your core things that you do, and who you serve, right? So that's the idea with that. The next component are your three key messages. And because, trust me, there's a lot more you want to say than what your company does than just that brand statement, right? So the next thing is really looking at what are the three key things that are central to our brand, central to what we do, central to that value proposition, you know, that problem that we, we uniquely solve, written in the kind of language that our target audience uses, that they're comfortable with, that resonates with them. But those three key things, again, very simple, kind of a little bit like your brand statement. You can get a little more fun and clever with those, but still keep it really simple. Um, then there's a lot more that, again, even beyond those three key messages that you want to say and want to describe your company. And so we always say when you when you have more time and space, right? So more space on a website, more time, you know, in a podcast or whatever it may be, or, you know, in, on Instagram and social media. But we call these supporting points. 
So these are going to be all the other things that you want to say about your company that really kind of belong in your brand language, in your brand strategy. Um, it could be, you know, you might talk, you might divide it up by products that you offer. Um, maybe you divide it up almost a little bit more into the primary audience and the secondary audience, maybe more key things that they need to know about your company. But the, the idea is that it's all written. The, this is, these are really copy points that you can take and put right onto a website, right into social media. It's all written within your brand, but it's just more of your brand language, your brand messaging. Some extra things that a brand strategy may or may not have, um, only because maybe you don't need it, don't want it, but a tagline, that's also can be part of a, of a brand strategy. Your brand voice, you know, are you funny? Are you serious? Are you quirky? You know, again, just like that voice, you know, is, is that, is it a female voice? Is it a male voice? You know, however you, I mean, you can describe it in a number of different, different ways and the tone and those kind of go hand in hand. The idea with establishing your brand voice and tone is that eventually you're going to, your company is going to grow beyond just you, right? Maybe you hire an intern to do your social media. Maybe you are hiring a new business development person. Maybe you bring on a partner, whatever it may be. You have to be able to almost hand this brand strategy over to your team, somebody that joins you and they need to know, Oh, okay. Um, we, you know, we're quirky and funny and this is our tone. And these are the, and these are the things that we say and how we say it, and how we describe it. Um, okay. So much. And you guys, if you're, if you're driving your car, it's so good. It's so good. So if you're driving your car and you can't write these down, you can't follow along, make sure you grab the, the branding template because that will guide you through this process as well. So a couple of the things here I wanted to point out for our listeners that, um, that just so they're aware again of how these things apply. And next week we're going to be talking about actually how to use your brand strategy in real life. But when we're talking about these three key messages, um, that really is, that, those are the things that you guys want to take. Those are the things you guys want to get traction on. Um, those are the things that when you aren't meeting with people one-on-one, -on -one, those are the things you want to share across social media. Because if you share a hundred messages across social media, nobody knows what you're doing. And it's very hard to get to get noticed as it is in the online business space and so or in any space but especially across digital and social media platforms and so those key messages are really really important so we have so many clients come to us and they they have their key messages nailed right but but people sometimes still don't understand. And so I think one of the hardest things that I have seen for entrepreneurs is being able to get out of their own head and change the terminology to their audience's voice, like you were saying, <laughs> their audience's words. What what language are is their buyer using or what words are going around in their buyer's head when when they're actually trying to come up with their, their tagline or their key messages or their brand description? And I just... Um, I would love it if you could give our listeners some tips because we're so close. They are so close to their own business. They're so close to their own problem. I deal with this all the time with you and Sarah, who's my Facebook ad strategist. Like I will send copy over. And I think Sarah, a couple of months ago, was like, April, nobody knows what you're talking about, honey. <laughs> that is your language. You're speaking your language. Nobody else knows what that is. Blah, 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 blah. And she'll scratch it all out and trash it and rewrite it for me because I'm too close to it. Or because I think we take for granted the things we know. And that's a really big thing. I think that as entrepreneurs, we forget not knowing something. We forget what it feels like to not know something. But we need to go back to that point, and our listeners need to go back to that point in order to build a really good brand strategy. How would you recommend they do that? Okay, so a couple of things there. You... Um, let me give some tips. I think the best thing to do is maybe give some tips of how to almost research this target audience. We call it discovery. You know, you're going to do, before you start your process, you're going to kind of do a lot of discovery. You're going to do a lot of research. So researching your target audience and, um, you know, looking at, okay, again, kind of like we were just saying, what kind of words and stuff do they use? A good way to be able to do that is start Googling, start doing, doing 
keyword searches as if you were your customer and you're trying they're trying you're trying to find a company like yours or even just put in some really basic terms um, that describe your company and what you'll start to see is um, Google will start to say you know other related searches or other people search and so you can start to see where there's keywords and, and keyword phrases that your intended audience is using to find you or to find a company like yours. And that actually is a part of our process. When we work with clients, we do Google keyword searches. And interestingly enough, we're working with, um, or we're working with a client right now, and they sell um, pre-owned office furniture. And we were telling them that, you know, um, you know, people don't really search for office desks. They, they search for office workstations. Oh, Right. I wouldn't have known. Right. Okay. You wouldn't have known. But again, so it kind of changed their mindset a little bit. They're like, oh, you know, we always think of it as like a desk or I think they called it something like a workplace or something. But anyway, we're like, no, when, when your audience is searching workstation is, is, is a term that they use. So that's a good way. I mean, Google, you know, you can find anything on Google, but almost put yourself in the, in the shoes of, you know, your audience. Another thing is, um, is, and then this is more true probably if you've maybe already had a couple of clients so far. Ask. Mm-hmm. Ask, your, <laughs> ask your clients, your customers, certainly the ones that are your best clients, but maybe go back and talk to a client or a customer that um, maybe was not happy or, um, you know, maybe you, they didn't really re-engage with you. But just ask, you know, how did you find us? Um, you know, what things did you re- you know, related about our company. So you can get some kind of insight that way. And then another thing is test these key messages on other people and maybe not your family because they know this as well as you do, or maybe they don't. Sometimes we assume that our family knows our companies as well as we do. But like, (laughs) if you were to ask them to describe what we did, they'd be like, uh, I don't know what she does. Yeah. Right. So anyway, but kind of testing some of that messaging as well. Um, but those are just a couple of, you know, kind of easy ways to find that, that, that language that your audience is using. Yeah. And then, and I, that's so important. And so, and one of the things, if you guys have not yet tuned in to, if you're having, if you're struggling with this particular point and you can't get your audience's language, but you do have an established business, you do work with people, um, but you're, you're really still honing in on getting your language, um, go back and listen to my podcast episode number 134. So in podcast episode 134, I take you through the exact steps to host a one-on-one discovery call. And there are questions that you should be asking in a discovery call with people who are considering working with you. And I want you to write down their answers to your questions. You're going to ask them like, what are you struggling with? Why do you, how did you find me? What do you need? And what are you looking for? They will tell you every single time. So if you already have a, a business and you haven't documented the words that are actually coming out of your client's mouth on these discovery calls, then that is a perfect place to also get really good um, messaging that other people in their same place are going to are going to relate to. So it's just kind of another little cheat sheet there for you guys, if that's something that you're struggling with here. Yeah, I think actually, I think that is a perfect suggestion. I think another thing is when you're out there networking, which you should be doing all the time, I mean, I know this is not what we're talking about today, but you cannot grow a business if you're not networking. So um, when you're out there networking, just like you were saying, listen, listen to people about how they're talking to you and some of the questions they're asking, because those are probably the key words that you need to make, you need to have in your key messaging. Okay. That's so rad. That's so good. Okay. So, um, what are actually, are there certain steps that you want people to go through, to go through this process or follow along and complete the components? As you said, what are your next steps for our listeners today now that they understand really what the components of a brand strategy should be? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So, um, steps to self branding. And I say, this is, these are the, the, Steps that you would want to go through if, you know, you're like, okay, I just need, I don't have, I can't invest in somebody else, working with somebody else to put together my brand strategy. I need to do it myself. You need to DIY it, which honestly is a great way to start. I mean, just start with something and get a strategy in place and start testing it. Um, The other thing, the other reason that's important to do this is if you are going to work with somebody, it's really good to have thought through a lot of these things 
on your own and start to put some things down on paper. And if you have a business partner or a team, kind of bounce some things off of them because I've been in a lot of situations with clients where, you know, we start going through this discovery and deep dive process and they're like, oh gosh, we haven't thought about this. We, or we, you know, we don't really have an agreement on this if it's like a partnership situation. So it's good to go through this um, regardless, right? Okay. Okay. So the steps to do that, and these steps are essentially going to help you work through and kind of start working on filling out your different components of your brand strategy. I like to tell people, Start with sort of what you have right now, right? You've, if you've, or if you're at least this far, you have a business plan. You've probably written a mission statement. You've probably written like my values. You know, some, you know, you've all, you've written some sort of little description of what you are or an about us, right? So start with that and start looking at okay, how much of that really still fits who you are? Is that the direction your company is going? And do you find that it that people relate to that? right? And start looking at what's working and what's not and kind of where you are, right? That's almost your base. Then the next answer is why? We need to start working on positioning, right? And so ask, you know, this is, you know, asking your why, like, why did you start this business? Why, why does your audience need you or need the product you have? Where, you know, um, you know, what are you providing? That's not, that's not already there again. What problem I say this, um, uh, you know, over and over, but what problem do you solve uniquely and uniquely and really get down that why like why are you serving the people that you do then start to look at how that you're so the next thing is you're going to be you know as we said um researching your competitors and this is you know look at their websites try to figure out what's their messaging what's their positioning right maybe what what kind of advertising or marketing they're doing, Um, you know, the pros and cons of their product or their service. You know, you can do like a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats of your competition, and then do one of yourself, of yourself. So you're going to start to compare those and you're going to start to see between where there's holes that your product fills or niches in the marketplace that your competitors are not. You'll be able to tell that from the SWOT most likely. And then compare that to your why, And you're going to start really, this positioning will start to take shape. Okay, target audience. (laughs) So you have this positioning, you have like, here's why I think I'm out there serving, you know, with my uniquely, um, the problem that I'm uniquely solving. But does it relate to your target audience? Like, okay, what are they looking for? And really, again, like we were talking about earlier, defining them. Some great, um, some great resources for that. If you, um, if you're, you should have, everyone should have a library card, your library card, your public library. Um, there's a lot of times a huge, an awesome database or like online resources. There's a program called demographics now, which is fantastic. And especially if you're a business to consumer type of company. Um, but it's a great way to do some really in-depth demographic research. And so you can start to kind of fill that out. But again, just identifying your, your ideal customer, you know, um, who is she, who is he and how old are they and how much money do they make? And, you know, where are they finding their information? And, you know, are they, is social media a big factor for them, particularly in your, maybe your product space. So some things like that really filling out who they are. Um, and then like we were talking about earlier, what, kind of messaging, you know, how are they searching for a product like yours? What's that problem that they're trying to solve? And what are those, like I'm typing here, you know, what are, what are they typing into Google to find you? And start looking for some key phrases and words that you need to incorporate in your brand. Gotcha. Uh, right? Okay. Um, so the next, the next, so we've established the target audience. We've Laid, laid out our positioning, kind of know the direction that we're going and where we fit within the competitive landscape, and now create your brand statement. So this is that one sentence, the elevator speech, if you will, of you know who you are, who you serve, and, and where you're located, if that's applicable thing. But you know, again, that one sentence that clearly states what you do, what you offer, and then your three key messages. And, you know, these could be bullet points for right now. And then you'll start to almost kind of create like a, again, one sentence of the three key points of your business that all the other things that you want to say, the supporting points, and those can be almost like subtitles with, with bullet points underneath them, sentences, um, 
tagline, start thinking about the brand voice, brand tone, kind of a, you know, those are almost adjectives, but, you know, describing those. And then the, if you're really gung ho, (laughs) um, you can do what we call a word wardrobe. And basically what this is, these are all the the words and the adjectives that are on brand, that describe your brand, that you might use, you know, in your social media post or when you're talking about your brand or in an advertising campaign, whatever, but that describe your brand. It could be words and phrases. Sometimes for us, a lot of times it's, it's words that or phrases that didn't quite make it into the three key messages, something like that, (laughs) that you can use later. Um, It could even be like, fun little like social media campaign ideas, you know, that some of those things come out of that. But though that is the the steps to to creating kind of your first self brand to DIY in it. Or like I said, even just to start thinking through a lot of these things so that when you do work with somebody, it's really productive. And you've already thought through some different scenarios or some different positioning. And what they're going to do, if you struggle, maybe you're feeling like, okay, I can come up with all these things, but I can't write this messaging. I'm not a writer. And a a lot of this really is copywriting. Um, That's a great time to do it on your own and then work with somebody to help craft that messaging, help help tell that story. Okay, I love that. And then at this point in time, after they do all this, is this when you recommend saying, okay, now you're in a position where you can go do the visual branding side of it, the logo, the design, the colors. Is, is that when you usually recommend that happens? Or when do you usually recommend people go through that process? So so if somebody were to work with us in this, we have what we, so we do um, discovery, deep dive, positioning strategy. But if we're also doing a visual brand for somebody creating a logo, we'll, while we're doing that positioning and strategy, we're also doing the logo concepts and creating that. That's kind of happening at the same time because by that point, we've researched and really figured out the competitive landscape and the target audience. But if you're doing this, if you're DIYing it, doing it on your own, I would suggest working through this positioning. And really having all of this set so that you can almost hand what, what you're going to, in essence, create is a, is a brand brief, a creative brief. And any good graphic artist is going to want something like that. Yes. They're going to, they're going to want, okay, who are you, ta- who are you talking to? You know, what's your product? And, and they're going to want, they're going to want to read through the supporting points because they want to understand your company so they can really create something that's custom for you. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I, so if you're doing it more like that, then you want to do, you want to create the strategy first and then create your visual, your visual brand, but your, that's your logo, the fonts, colors, the look and feel. Okay. All right. Excellent. My gosh, we covered so much information today. And I know that these are so many questions that people have had. Um, they're questions that, that you and I both deal with with clients, but then there are also questions that I think that you guys might have now that you didn't know you should even be asking. So it's such a jam packed episode. Make sure you guys go over and listen to the show notes for this and download the brand strategy guide. And Liz, there's actually another step after this that we're going to dive into next week. And we're going to dive into really how to use this brand strategy in in day to day where to apply all of this hard work because i know that there is there is some not frustration, but I think it's more just lack of understanding sometimes where you go through all this work and you develop this strategy and you have this brief and yes, you have the representation of the visual logo out of it, but then somebody's like, okay, great. I have this really great long piece of paper (laughs) that I worked really hard and my brain is so tired and it it sounds good, but what do I do with it? So we're going to, we're going to talk about that next week, right? Right. That is correct. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I can't wait for for us to dive in even further. And if you guys want to connect more, make sure you hit Liz up on social media. You can follow Novella Brand House on social media. You can hit me up at Sweet Life Entrepreneur or April Beach on social media as well. And um, and we would love to connect with you further about this. This is Liz and I have been having this conversation for about 13, 14 years <laughs> together now. So um, this is a great conversation and, and we're really, we're really glad to kind of bring everybody into this if you haven't been here before.